this is my first video back to YouTube since getting banned on TikTok and to be totally honest, I I don't even want to make this video. I don't want to be anywhere near the internet and I'm feeling very scared about being vulnerable. I don't want to talk about my personal life because I know that it's going to be picked apart and made fun of and there was a group of people who wanted me off of TikTok. They claimed that they couldn't make content because of me and all these different outrageous things. Really, it's people who don't want me calling out like grifters. They don't like that I'm calling out a very serious grift that is going on everywhere <laughs> called New Age Spirituality. Um, and there's a lot of depth and nuance that I couldn't give on TikTok, but there's a group of people that were really mad about what I was talking about and their goal was to get me removed from TikTok which they did after months of just I mean I've never seen cyberbullying like this and I've received so much message so many messages from people and letters and <laughs> all these things where people were like I've never seen one person get attacked like this and of course there's been way worse things that have happened to other people I'm just saying this was something else and I nearly um, lost my life because of this situation and I'm not like exaggerating about that and my whole life is changing and I'm really traumatized. <laughs> I'm, I'm really traumatized. Their whole goal was to get me off of TikTok and to get me to stop talking about this stuff. And I had half a million followers between two accounts. So, of course, I a lot of people were following me and I was going viral or semi-viral every few weeks. I had about 1.5 million views a week on my Ally Starts a Cult account um, when this drama kind of went down and uh, it culminated with these women were not able, they made like a, a call for me to be deplatformed. They spread horrendous defamatory lies about me. They tore through my personal life in such a scary way and they couldn't get people to hate me. I was gaining followers. Like, I'm not a liar. I will admit when I do things wrong. I will admit mistakes I've made and they couldn't they couldn't get people to hate me. I mean, the things that they dug up from my personal life <laughs> and tried to use against me, like, I never treated people like this, ever. I asked dangerous spiritual creators to please be careful about the content that they were putting out. And I asked them if they understood autism and how the brain works. And I asked them to be careful about putting their followers in psychosis. And I asked Alex Surf's T not to make doomsday predictions where people quit their jobs and people take their lives and people keep their kids outside all night waiting on a sign that Alex promised that never comes. I was asking for people not to do stuff like that. I was not calling for anyone to be deplatformed. I was not ripping into their personal lives. I was never going and doing stuff in their personal lives. Ever. Everything that you guys saw, I did on the internet. I don't have any burner accounts. I didn't make one burner account in this entire situation. Everything I did was on Allie Starts a Cult and conversations with Allie and it was above board. I have a ton of different random old TikTok accounts that I either got locked out of or temporarily banned or whatever. I've been on TikTok forever. When all of this stuff goes to court, it is going to be so fascinating. Everybody's internet activity, mine's clean. Mine is very clean. And before all this drama, once all this drama started, I do not like how I acted on TikTok for sure. It all became so crazy. TikTok rots your brain. I take responsibility for a ton of different mistakes I made, but I'm not a liar. And I didn't do what Samara said. <laughs> I'll get into this whole story in another video. That's not what this video is about. This video is about how to deal when life serves you crazy shit like this. And how to deal with death and like actual death and death of something you thought you wanted, like my TikTok and 
death of trust in people and and death of 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 someone that was really close to me that's what i'm going to talk about in this video but i made a lot of mistakes on tiktok and i have taken time to reflect and i have gotten myself unaddicted to tiktok and i was not about to let tiktok drama put me in the place that it did where i almost took my and that's so real, that's so serious. And just because I make jokes on the internet doesn't mean that that didn't happen and doesn't mean that it it hasn't traumatized me to the point where these people changed my brain. They changed how I see the world. They changed how I see people. When you encounter true psychopathic, malignant, sadistic narcissists who are willing to wreck someone else for sport, it changes you. I've never been through this. In my personal life, like the narcissists that I've dealt with haven't been sadistic. They've generally been male. They've generally, like I have never dealt with female um, sadistic narcissists like Roxy and like Samara and all these other people, obviously AMW. I am not a mental health professional. Barry Ann. Those 500,000 followers what it did is gave me a target on my back and four female covert sadistic malignant narcissists again this is all hearsay this is all for educational purposes this is all for uh allegedly this is all allegedly i am not a mental health professional and i said that a million times so but four of them found me and I became their target and I gave all four of them very specific narcissistic injuries. And I'm so sick of using the word narcissist. I don't want to throw it around, but there are true, true blue ones. And I found out that allegedly Miss Carrie Ann herself <laughs> is allegedly committing multiple types of fraud money shuffling going on. There's a lot of not paying food vendors off. There's a lot of finding semi-legal ways to completely screw someone exactly like she did to me. This group of women couldn't get me off TikTok. So one of them, they were all a group talking to each other. I have all the proof. One of them named Carrie Ann bought four trademarks in my TikTok usernames, told me she was going to take me off the internet, sent me death threats, told me that she owned all of my content. This makes me so mad. Told me that she owned all of my content now and that it's time to pay up and rent is due. So I better take it all off the internet. And she's going to sh sue the shit out of me for my content. And I talked to an attorney. They said, she can't do that. I said, well, she bought trademarks. And they said, okay, well, you can fight that. This is a long process. And there's no way she can get you off of TikTok. Those aren't their trademarks. And if she threatened you with it, that's a crime, right? If they get something done with it, that's a crime. And she had to lie on all of the paperwork and say that she could use my names, have permission, and that she had intentions to use it and all this different stuff. Every part of this was fraud. And then they sent in, they convinced TikTok that my content wasn't my own. And I got taken down for infringement issues, for trademark issues, and for copyright issues. It doesn't specifically say. But it's about 20 pieces of content on each account. And on each and every single piece of that, each content, I had to fill out under perjury of law. And it said, if you're lying, that's a huge problem. Under fe the federal district court, all this stuff, 45 counts of that. They're lying and pretending to be me, putting me in a scary legal position. And they took two and c they convinced TikTok that that they own my content. 
or they have my trade like it they tricked the system it shouldn't have worked right and i believe i will get my tiktoks back this is all taking this is all such a long process people sometimes comment they're like just do this just do that like why haven't you done this it's like i've done everything that i can do in this situation i am i don't have tons of money i'm not going to put my parents in a terrible position and I like or beg them to and they don't have the money to help me either and they shouldn't have to help me with something like this and anything with the law takes a very long time. It takes such a long time. Trying to get anything done in Canada is very hard. These people put me in such a terrible position and then they just continue to beat this dead horse and use my name and they must think that I'm very very famous to be continuing to talk about me I mean Jesus Christ that's the funniest thing about TikTok fame when you're TikTok famous or whatever I never thought of myself as that Roxy always said that you're so TikTok famous blah 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 before she completely screwed me over um because she is a consummate scam artist i mean i've never seen someone take anything they can and spin it into some horrible story and try to make money on it i it's it's incredible to watch and there's no depth and it's just she can just put like a nice package on something and throw it out there but when you open it up there's nothing in it (laughs) and she just keeps doing it and she won't stop using me But the funniest part is that I had, yeah, whatever, 500,000 followers on TikTok. To other people, that seems like such a big deal. Do you know how much of my audience I actually reached there? Even if I went viral every few weeks or whatever, or semi-viral or whatever. Do you know how much you actually get from that? People really have this idea that having hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok means something. The only place that means something is on TikTok. If you're not part of this like tiny funnel of people like the Charlie D'Amelio's and or the people right under that, like the people like Two Tone Tony or people who just pull views, there's such a small funnel. Everybody else reaches less than three percent of their audience most of my friends that had millions of followers didn't even reach one percent the second you hit 100k you lose two or three hundred sometimes 400 followers a day just because of how the app works i know people who are actually famous on tiktok there's one woman that you guys will all know she's been on there for years she lives in a different country she cannot like you would think you would think she makes so much money. She has so many connections. She can just pull. <laughs> She's one of those like two turnt Tony people that it doesn't, she doesn't do anything like him, but she pulls views. And after three years on TikTok, she can't even get a, like her basic needs met. Can't move out of her parents' house. Because TikTok is not what you think. It's, it's generally a facade. In so many ways, it's a facade. And (laughs) the fact that these people got me off of TikTok and they're not making their own content, they're still talking about me and thinking that, A, I'm famous enough that they can just use my name to build their brands, even though if they wanted to do that, they should have kept me on TikTok. (laughs) Then maybe they could have gotten some traction. But not only did they criminally take someone off TikTok, now they're just beating that dead horse showing that that wasn't their intention at all. They just want to absolutely trash someone and they want to use someone who they think has a huge name and they're showing me how obsessed they are with me and how much they th- how much power they really think I have by not only de- not only just continuing to lie and all of these things, only abusers could do this. Only abusers could seriously get what they want push someone to the point where they almost die, lie for four months straight, get caught in those lies, and then put out a podcast about it all and pretend. (laughs) This shit is comical. I'm sorry. This is not what I was planning on talking about in this video, but I just needed to say those things. 
be so embarrassed. These people got me off of TikTok. What do you want? They want me silent. Because they know that I'm honest. They know they can't keep me down. They know I can... That, that I'm the receipt queen. And they know that I'm authentic. And they know that I'm funny. And they even have to use my jokes. Like... Maybe I should feel famous. It makes me feel famous. <laughs> wow. Oh, those are two different vines, aren't they? <laughs> Once again, just because I'm laughing does not mean that anybody can take this situation lightly. This is who I am. I also process trauma by laughing. And I'm allowed to express however I want to express after what I just lived through. And at some point, if you're new to my channel, I will tell the whole story top to bottom. I just, first of all, I'm filming and editing all this stuff on, a, on an iPhone, okay? So <laughs> I'm working on my technology problems, okay? We're moving to a computer. It's so hard to film these long form videos and the amount of detail that I want to put in this. And I don't want to talk about this a bunch. I just want it to be unemotional here are the facts here's how it went down da, 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 a to z and now I never want to talk about these people again and I will update you all in terms of like what happens legally because I'm gonna make this a very um, serious case for creators and I'm gonna figure out how to help other protect other creators from this and the law needs to catch up the law needs to catch up to what is going on online. And it is, but I'm going to be part of pushing that even further. So I'll update you guys about that stuff. But I don't want to give these people a second of my energy or my life. But it does make me feel crazy that there is not one spot on YouTube or somewhere where there's just an hour long, long form video where I explain my side of things. People can believe. I'm not saying I'm... You, you can believe whoever you want, but I want to put out just that. So it's all in one spot and everybody can see. There's not that many people who care about it. I mean, that's the truth. It's over. It's really over. And these people really hurt someone and they took a really awesome space from a lot of people. And what they did was so serious and it should not have happened. I'm also redoing this entire space and it's driving me nuts. And I struggle with spatial stuff so much. And I just need to not be a perfectionist. Like this is not how I want it to look at all behind me. And I'm just like messing around with plants and trying to make something work. But if you have executive function problems or you're autistic and you never stop processing, you know the hell I'm in. You know the hell I'm in. But I'm just, you know what? I'm just going to put this video out and not freak out. I just have to push myself to not get stuck in that ADHD performance hell zone. I just, this is going to be part of my content going forward is teaching myself how to live in an autistic brain and a brain with extreme ADHD and brain injury and all that stuff. I'm going to teach myself how to do that. And I haven't had time while being on TikTok to really like get into how to create a life. And I, while I was on TikTok, I found out I was autistic. So it's like, you know, now that I'm off, I'm going to really take care of myself and rebuild my life. And if stuff works, I will tell you guys. Anyways, I think it's very clear what happened. And I'll always admit to the mistakes I made, obviously. And I have nothing to prove. This all needs to be over. I don't owe anyone an explanation. I have provided receipts for months. It When you give the truth to people, when you apologize to abusers, when you say, hey, like, I know I made mistakes. What about yours? Or can we all just end this? Because, or, like, you know, they can't. They won't. If you go to someone like Roxy and you give her the truth or you give her... um. Like, people went to her with her exact timeline about this whole peace situation, the girl who passed, and they went to her months ago and said, it's very clear that you're lying or confused about this. And these are people who don't like me. I did not lie about the girl who died, and we're going to talk about that in a second because they need to stop talking about her. Stop talking about the girl who passed. It's so disrespectful, and if you people consider yourselves spiritual... 
let's talk about that and what you're doing. That girl hasn't even been dead for four months. None of you understand like what you're doing. I actually was trained in Siberian shamanism with ethics. You, that's serious, right? So we'll talk about that in a second. Instead of just answering any of those questions or proving that she was right, she like got vile and had an epic meltdown in that Reddit thread. These are people who don't like me. And she went off on all of them because they were allowed to like question her one day it was like an open open forum or something i <laughs> and instead of just answering those questions if you're not lying you should be able to answer them pretty easily she got so angry started hurling insults at everyone you know called them all losers and, blah, 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 and just all the things she loves to call people and sabotaged her own reddit thread like you guys were all supposed to hate me together i just but that's what abusive people do you come to them with facts you come to them rational you try to set boundaries with them and they can't do it they take you setting boundaries as a personal attack as a narcissistic injury and they get vindictive and certain types of abusive people decide that they want to ruin your life. And I ran into four of them, five of them, six of them, but mainly four. And then they all got together, took me off TikTok, did a ton of illegal things, defamatory things, all of that. And now they still want me gone. It's so creepy. I have nothing to prove. Like, I have nothing to prove at all. I've explained the entire story a million times. I've provided all the receipts. I just want the satisfaction of seeing it all in one place. And I know there are people who are willing to help me and I need to ask for help in a lot of ways and stop caring. Like, people have been so, so, so helpful to me in this situation, but there are certain situations where I need to ask for more help and I need to do that. And thank you. I can never say thank you enough to all the people who have been so kind to me. You people are amazing. You guys are amazing. Seriously. People have been so kind to me. Thank you. So before I start my actual video about death in spring and how to deal with life when things just get completely messed up and I'm not teaching you how to deal, I'm talking about how I don't know how to deal. <laughs> This isn't me uh, telling you how to deal with these things. This is me commiserating with you and telling you what I've been going through and hopefully it helps you feel inspired and hopefully it makes you want to feel alive more and hopefully it makes you feel less alone. But before we get started, I just wanted to say that I do feel unbelievably vindicated in this entire situation. Not only do I know exactly what happened with this entire thing, but I got all the texts that I needed from that woman who claimed I was her fake therapist and did all those horrible things. Her name is Samara. There's a lot more information on my Instagram too, but I just think it's confusing. Just wait for the long form video. The drama is done. Like whatever. It's all a legal matter now, even though it's really scary that I know Samara stalks me every day, but taking care of that takes a very long time. Like Samara, you could, I know you're watching this, you could literally go f clothe, feed, and give a homeless man an apartment today. <laughs> like, you realize that, right? Instead of watching me, you could go change someone else's life with the amount of money that Samara has spent on me and the amount of time. Like, she's filthy rich. She's her fa Like, the amount of money that she has... You're going to go spend a million dollars on psychics and then a million dollars on your ex-boyfriend and then spend 50k to stalk him on the internet like you did to me. And then when I become your new pet project, how much money have you spent on me, Samara? How much money are you willing to spend on me? <laughs> what could you do with that money? You could change people's lives in a good way. Nah, she's not gonna do that. Your person, I'm the bitch that will beat you the fuck up. Don't play with me ever.
but I feel so vindicated because I got actual texts of Samara admitting everything she lied about. Roxy and AMW are so obsessed with me and they are, they basically gave me so much evidence. It's unbelievable. And it's all like, it will never go away. Even if that podcast gets taken down, they admit to all of their cyber stalking, all of their bullying. They admit to having fake accounts. They, it's literally, they gave me an expose of exactly how these people (laughs) bullied one person to to try to silence them over months and months and months and months. And one of those specific hosts, Jane Bonnis, called in a wellness check on me to the police department in my town and said that she was scared I was going to take my own life. There was one night that a bunch of bad stuff happened, and I'll explain that. And she knew she had pushed me to that point, or they knew they had pushed me to that point. So these people who bullied me called the cops for your safety like i was so upset i was like crying when i saw that video um and then she told me like okay carrie ann's gonna send in one um and then sam told me she sent in one and then she said either rosemary or rosemary's husband called in one and amw called in one all after the bathtub video yeah like knowing now what i know the fact that, like, Sam was the one to call a wellness check on you is so fucked up. At that point in time, I didn't know what I know now, but I just saw that video and I was like, this is an emergency, like, someone needs to call somebody. Um, and Sam was like, I'm calling now. And then she told me that Carrie Ann and AMW and, and Rosemary all called in a wellness check for you after that bathtub video um but yeah now that i know what actually happened it is extremely fucked up that those are the people to call to like they led you to that spot and then they were the ones that called to like make sure that you didn't kill yourself this is the most disturbing part of this story and none of these people ever thought that I was going to find out that they were the ones who called the cops, said they were my friends, and called in a wellness check on me. They never thought that I would find that out, but I did. They wanted me arrested. They didn't want to get blamed for my death. I mean, it. this is so traumatizing. I don't even want to make this. Carrie Ann has said that she has zero empathy. I told her that I know she called the cops that night and she said, okay, and you're not dead. You're annoying. You don't deserve a voice. Here is Samara who started the entire lie about me. She will cause someone to take their life. And then here is Emily bragging about what they did to me. Can you imagine posting a video gloating that you almost bullied someone to death and trying to threaten her again? They already took my platforms. They cannot stop talking about me. This person is completely obsessed. Also, was that supposed to be a hard punch, Emily? Like, for the love of God, this is so embarrassing. This video was just made, too. I made a video to this song. And Emily had to respond and try to act like they were going all hard on me or something. The best part is their podcast page got banned later that night. (laughs) I'm sorry. That's too good. That's too good. Imagine starting a podcast about how you're a safe space on the internet when this is the kind of stuff you say to people. This is how Aquarian Music Witch talks to people all day. I caught Jane Bonnis in a lie. I've caught Jane Bonnis in so many lies. That's why Jane Bonnis wants me dead. (laughs) But I caught Jane Bonnis in another lie. And they said, so are you lying on purpose? Or do you actually have too disorganized of a brain to comprehend that you're doing it? Wow. And I've talked so much about my struggles with my brain disorganized brain is this a slam on her autism again the ableism in this spiritual community is trash which is so true and aquarium music glitch goes no i'd never slam anyone's autism okay you just slam disorganized thinking very good okay disorganized thinking isn't an autism thing 
For someone who claims to have two master's degrees and, like, good God, you will never find a comment of me talking to someone like that. And Jane said so many things like this that just were so beyond cruel. And just, I mean, you don't think that disorganized thinking is an autism thing? I'm really going to need you to read like one book on autism, Jane. That would be great. These people say that I'm too mentally ill for people to listen to me. They say Roxy claimed that I'm not autistic. They said over and over again that I'm just psychotic. Like this... <laughs> I This is exactly how abusers act. And they really see no problem with it. No, I'd never slam anyone's autism. I would just slam disorganized thinking and, and this girl that I don't like. But I would never slam autism. Like, get a fucking clue. Emily, if you can make this video and that podcast and all of this stuff after calling the police and telling them that you were scared that I was going to take my life because of your actions, I need you to seek professional help. This is when the internet just rots people's mind and brain. And when a true abuser is using the internet in this way, people will get killed people will kill themselves and people will go insane and this is so disturbing please get help i'm gonna get blamed for my death number one which they would have and number two they it was like a it was like killing two birds with one stone it's like oh shit we can't let Allie really die because if she does all of us have just bullied her to death and she said for months that this could push her over the edge and we never stopped life update i feel like the drama needs a name drama gate Dramageddon. Right, because my life, my reputation, my everything is a game to you. What the fuck are you doing? This is like actually so scary. You guys are going to push someone to take their life. Like, do you get that? That's what happens in these situations. You got close to me just to use me and now and now you're trying to ruin my life? You wanted to use my followers to get $2,500 a week ago. And now I, my entire life is a game to you. Life update. I feel like the drama needs a name. Drama gate? Drama geddon? Receipt gate? Deplatform again. <laughs> themselves took their own life um, because the spirituality was a lie. She was lying about it. The way that. I'm gonna get back to supporting my community and posting good information. I'm autistic, actually autistic, not stupid. You are all talk. I'm autistic, actually autistic, not stupid. You are all talk. And that is why it's all you can do is hit record and hop on live stream and throw a tantrum like a petulant toddler that needs a nap and a binky. This is child's play child's play but i don't play kids games and i'm not mm. gonna handle you with kid gloves since we want to play inspector gadget since we want to call me a pathological liar let's test your critical thinking skill i'm so sorry there's no way she's actually being this rude to people you're telling people that they have no critical thinking skills while you are bold-faced lying the number of um licensed mental health professionals that i've seen inserting themselves in this ASAC drama is astounding to me. Licensed mental health professionals in parasocial relationships with TikTok influencers can see social media content between two people that had a one-to-one -one real life friendship at one point, looking at their social media content armchair diagnosing them and deciding that the one that's being the aggressor and the abuser that that one is the actual victim and then taking to their own platforms yes roxy licensed mental health professionals who specialize in narcissism could actually see what was going on here and they could see through her lies. And this specific therapist asked her to stop calling me psychotic, to stop saying that I'm not autistic. 
and said, you know, Roxy, if you're not lying, then just provide your receipts. Then just tell us your side of things. Allie provides the receipts and you are being the abuser here. If Roxy wasn't lying, it would have been very easy for her to prove that. Roxy usually comes off very calm, very kind, very unassuming, and I believe that this is what covert narcissism is, and this is what it looks like when the mask slips, and they become vile and vindictive, and they get caught in their lies, and they just lash out at other people, and watch how she gets this sedation laugh when she talks about how somebody could possibly think that she's the abuser. It's ugh. After this video, Roxy and Jubilee actually tried to get this therapist fired, like for real. And with the audacity of licensed mental health professionals to say that I am the abuser and I am the bully in this situation, it's comical to me. I've seen licensed therapists on this app get fired from their real life jobs for so much less than what I've seen these ASAC therapists doing. One in particular says that she specializes in uh, caring for victims of narcissistic abuse. <laughs> How sad would it be for your clients to stumble upon your TikTok and see you act like the abusers that they probably go to you for to heal from. I've seen therapists on TikTok get fired from their real jobs for calling out concepts around mental health. And some of you are out here calling out specific people. Website that we just keep track of like, she has attacked these people and here's their stories. Mm -hmm. So when she inevitably goes on and attacks the next person, I'm sick, my life's a rope. Um, she's, uh, we'll have an, an evidence of that, but everyone else will probably move on. Only me will not only me on my, <laughs> and only on my YouTube channel. I will continually until Alice. it's like, right. I've been very clear what I mm -hmm. mean by deplatformed. It is not safe for a following and a following is not safe for her. But maybe simply move on. Thanks for you're not moving on. But if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we could do that later when my kid's off at school. Or tomorrow, at some point. It's crazy to uh, me how all of her followers. I mean, I'd be really interested. Believe, in <laughs> they really believe that they have it all figured out and that they know who everybody is and what everybody's intentions were, and they truly know nothing. They believed a mentally ill woman who lied about a lot of things to try to save face. They know nothing, and they ask. It's so crazy that they haven't stopped. Um, if you knew that you bullied someone to the point that you almost took their life, you should stop talking about them for the rest of your life. That this, this should have all ended so long ago, but that night that I, like things got really, really bad. And the, the people who've been bullying me had to call the cops End that ends. How can any of you, how can, oh, I know because only narcissists can do shit like that. Only true abusers have that little empathy, that little awareness. Now your sister, I would believe, is <laughs> she strikes me as kind of liberal and on the level and really pretty too. You're probably super jealous. Um, but in response, I... When people mentioned to me months ago that I could push Alex Surf's tea over the edge, I stopped making videos about her. She never asked me. She never said she was getting put over the edge. That was before she lost her account with one point, however many million followers. I stopped talking about her. You guys had video evidence proof that I was close to taking my life. They rejoiced when I relapsed on alcohol. And they still won't stop. These people, five people, had to call the police. Samara, Carrie Ann... Rolling Rosemary, her husband, and AMW, Aquarian Music Witch, or Emily D, the co-host of this podcast about me. They had to call the police and say, we, they said they were my friends. I bet they were excited. Okay, we're going to stop her from killing herself so we won't get blamed, but she'll end up in an institution. I mean, these were the kind of jokes they were making. Let's, let's look at what uh, Rolling Rosemary said. We'll pull one piece of evidence into this video. 
this video was supposed to be about other stuff, but it will be. I just needed to say some of this. Look at this. This is how they treat me. This is a joke about Carrie Ann human trafficking me by buying those trademarks. And then Rolling Rose, I can't see it right now, but Rolling Rosemary says something like, yeah, what's Allie going to do? Trademark us from a mental institution? What women want another woman to go to a mental institution? What women want... <laughs> They were hoping that I would get locked up. They were hoping that I would freak out. I mean, Sam literally texted me and said, like, you're going to freak out on the cops again, blah, 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 blah. Like, it's it's that bad. It's that bad. God, it's traumatizing. <clears throat> it all should have ended that night. You guys got what you wanted. You pushed me to the breaking point. You took my accounts. You got Aunt Karen to just completely wreck everything. And Sam paid for bots that night. And you guys knew that I was in the middle of a mental health crisis. And you did it anyway. And no one will ever forget that. Especially me. And if you all actually think I'm a monster, why don't any of you actually talk to me? I have tried to approach each and every one of these people calmly, other than AMW, because I know AMW can't have a rational conversation, literally. And when I call, <laughs> literally. But everyone else I have had to try, try to have a rational conversation with outside of the internet, outside of TikTok, two of them I was close to and have their phone numbers, and none of them will. None of them. None of them will tell me how I've hurt them. None of them will have an adult conversation with me. None of them will try to work it out with me. They just want to keep using me. I have no respect for that. At some point, I'm going to gray rock all of you and ignore all of you. And I'm going to go move on with my life. And I'm going to heal from this situation. And all of you, at some point, will have to stop this behavior about me, but it will take time. So if you guys want to continue to show your true colors on the internet and you want to try to use me and a dead woman and my dead friend and what you guys did, you know, I know that they've completely warped reality in their brains and only abusers can do that. So I know that there's no amount of talking or proof or anything that will ever change Roxy or AMW or Sam or Barry's mind. And now I've gotten confirmation from some people in their real lives that these people are really like that, you know? And and we all know it. it it's gone on for so long. I mean, Roxy and AMW, like that, that podcast is an expose. Um, like they don't know that what they actually did was was put out 16 hours of revealing themselves and it's and and they and and they will never see that you know and they can't even go private on TikTok or they can't even go public on TikTok they they haven't even gone public on TikTok uh because they know I mean I think they have multiple TikTok accounts about me now Roxy has multiple reddits about me just last night somebody uh found a a Reddit thread that Roxy made. They have like 15 different subreddits about me. It's so creepy. Just last night, I'll put up the picture. Roxy found a subreddit or someone found a subreddit that Roxy made. And, and they were, she had this whole dissertation about proving herself or something. And I, I it's an older post from like a month or two ago, but this person commented and they were just like, you're really like full of it. And, and Roxy goes back, says back last night, less than 24 hours ago, dumb bitch. <laughs> How can you be trying to be a successful author, podcaster, and social media influencer when your comments, Roxy is cruel. AMW is cruel. I'll put up the picture of what Roxy said to my friend recently, where she called her an inbred, illiterate hag and made fun of her jewelry that she makes, which is beautiful. And it like it makes me so mad that Roxy can't like she has to say the most cruel things. 
She has to go over after everyone who's close to me. Anybody who supports me, they try to get them fired. They go after their personal lives. They've Sam has done weird stuff with like face ID with people and they threaten to dox. Dox the podcast threatens to dox anybody who supports me. They also dox a dead woman. I was not going to put their name in this, but like, like I would never say this kind of stuff to people. You inbred illiterate hag. What? And then she has to make fun of her for what she does for a living. And then this from AMW which I will never, ever, ever get over because I do have such a disorganized brain. I am disabled. I struggle every day to get such basic things done. And someone with a, with a couple master's degrees who's been in academia for over a decade and has money to burn, and this is like the quintessential perfect comment that she left for me a few months ago and they obsess they obsessively watch me so she knows how much I struggle with my brain even though they say I'm not disabled all the time and they say (laughs) I'm so mad the amount of times that Roxy has said that I'm not autistic or that people shouldn't listen to me because I'm mentally ill like first of all who (laughs) what like you Why does she think that anyone's going to listen to her when that's how she talks to people? I mean, I've had so many people message me and they were like, that was the moment I knew that you were the one telling the truth is when Roxy, she, I mean, she lets that mask, that mask slip constantly, that covert narcissist, the way she talks so quietly and calm and, um, yeah. And it's all passive aggressive. And then she lets that like narcissism mask slip. And the stuff that comes out of her mouth is so scary. Like, whoa. (laughs) Like, tell us what you really think, Roxy. What do you really think about autistic people? You really think you're going to create the only, only, only someone. I actually have compassion for these people because only people who are absolutely have been through horrendous trauma. And, and, and I mean, some people are just born with bad with bad personality disorders but like these four people I believe have there's a reason that they're like this there's a reason why Roxy has the ability to say these horrible horrible things and and hurt people and 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 lie bold face lie and have these grandiose ideas about having this podcast after you just publicly bullied this one like she true like only true again I'm not a professional I'm not trying to be mean this is for educational purposes but this is what narcissism is this is what abuse is and I also don't want to demonize anybody who's a narcissist okay but and we need to stop throwing the word around so much but this is truly someone when they when people show you things like this you have to go no contact you have to, and i should have ignored all of these people from the beginning and i have a whole section where i'm going to apologize to jessica because like i didn't do anything wrong with her death and i didn't lie and i got her vindication but i responded to amw and i involved myself with roxy when i knew i needed to cut her off like <laughs> this is going to end up being two different videos because this is not what I was expecting to talk about, but this is what's happening right now. All of the drama when I was like, it was so bad and I took part in it too, right? Like I'm not saying, but I never say stuff like this. Like, yes, I kept defending myself to these people and proving them wrong. And I should have never done that. If you're under a smear campaign, just ignore it. You need to just ignore it. And that's exactly why I'm not going to spend my entire summer going back and forth with these people. Like after the month of May, you will never hear about these people from me again unless I'm being interviewed about them. I have my first podcast tomorrow morning. It's going to take weeks to get edited and stuff, but I have my first one tomorrow. I have a lot of projects coming up. And unless there's something like that, you will not hear their names out of my mouth. No. No, even if I don't get some long form video done after this month, never again. 
Like, I, no, I don't play with abusers anymore. I'm not going to continue this game that they want to play with me. Absolutely not. This is what I should have done the first time. If this happens to you on the internet, you need to ignore it. AMW had like 200 views or something on her videos about me and I responded to them because AMW is so triggering to me but I should have never done it look at what happened look at what happened if somebody's talking bad about you on the internet ignore it you the worst part about people like this is you will never get them to to say yeah you're right I'm sorry that was messed up you will never get them to do that. And I have to just accept it. So everybody who hates me in that Reddit thread, they were like, God, I'm so sick of her gotcha moments. I'm so sick of her having receipts. You guys are sick of me having receipts? Okay. They're like, she edited all of those voice notes. Honey, I can barely understand how to work a hard drive. I'm having a hard time even moving pictures around. Okay. I didn't edit shit. I'm just honest. And you guys hate it. You guys absolutely hate it. <laughs> that was Kelsifer, by the way, if you're still watching me. Yeah, yeah, I saw what you said about those voice notes. Like, get a life, babe. Seriously. And tell your friend Zoomhoff to, too. <laughs> Cut that out, I guess. Like, I'm, I'm embarrassed for you that you are capable of acting like this. Here's proof that you're working with Sam and that you took months to get me down the night of Aunt Karen's live. This was the day of Aunt Karen's live. You guys were all working together. You're part of a huge... Now, your sister, I would believe, is... <laughs> she strikes me as kind of liberal and on the level and really pretty, too. You're probably super jealous. Um, but in response, I, right, I made a video that... Now, your sister, I would believe, is <laughs> she strikes me as kind of liberal and on the level and really pretty, too. You're probably super jealous. Um, you have tried to ruin my life for sport because you felt like I made you look stupid in an argument. And now we're here. This is the most childish, mean girl. I'm not like <laughs> that was right before I relapsed. And I found out that they were doing such a concerted effort to take down my TikToks and that they were all planning that whole Aunt Karen thing. I can barely remember those couple of days because I like that was so traumatizing. That was so traumatizing. And then at the end of that, let's 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 listen to this clip. This is a clip of the woman who saw my videos that hated me for months, Sam Geisha. She was part of this whole group and she felt so guilty the night I almost took my life. That she alerted, she alerted Sam and AMW and all these people, five people, including Carrie Ann, and they all called the cops and said that they were my friend. And like I said earlier, they were hoping they were going to get me arrested, but they also were like, Sam Geisha was actually scared for me. She actually cared. She was the only one who actually cared. It's so scary. I'm sure Samara wanted me to take my life that night. And... I'm going to play you a voice note from Sam Geisha that she sent to me that proves because she, she felt guilty about the whole thing. And she finally contacted me and gave me a ton of texts and it was amazing and I appreciate it. But, <laughs> but yeah, these people, including this person, Aquarian Music Witch, called in a wellness check. And here's the proof. So... You guys are going to call in a wellness check on someone you've bullied for the last few months. Hope, hopefully she gets locked up, you know? You just took her platforms. That doesn't change you guys at all. I take a month off the internet. I come back. I find out what actually happened. I wasn't even planning on coming back and making videos. Like, I... <laughs> I... It would... Yeah. I'll explain what happened during that month later on. But then I found out what really happened and I come back and these people don't stop. If you called the cops on someone and said, hey, I'm really scared this person is going to take their life. 
I could never make a video like this after and feel proud of the fact that I made a 16 part series about someone we nearly that I nearly pushed to death that I already took their big platforms that I already tried to get their entire family like put away and like ruin their reputation and they put my family in major at major risk and my, my entire family got death threats and all this stuff and Emily and Roxy decide that they would like to capitalize on that situation, not only me, but Jessica's death, and turn it into this sensational and harrowing story about two victims, Roxanne Renee and Jane Bonas, and they, <laughs> and they just admit to exactly what they did, and then they put out videos like this. If you almost bullied someone to death and you spent months stalking them and you, even if you hate someone to death, to bully, to, to realize that you almost, that, that they almost were not on this planet because of your actions and just a month later you're like, yeah, little girl, yeah. Like, that's a sadistic person. That's, that's someone who, who has zero empathy behind their eyes. It's... <laughs> You're watching actual, like, you know, real-time Darvo abuse and real-time, like, a lot, people have this happen in their personal lives all the time, and to have it happen so publicly is so crazy, you know, because they will not leave me alone. It's so clear what's happening here, and it's, it's, it's interesting because it's nice to get validation because it's so public, but because it's so public, like... And because it's the internet, like, things get even more out of hand. And people take things even more out of context. And these people can live off of me forever. They can they can take every video that I put out and, and twist my words and all this stuff. I dare anyone to find comments where I say anything like that. I won't. I actually am a good person. I actually have a plat- had a platform. I still have it. It's still mine. I did that. Roxy and Emily have no clue what that feels like. Ro- Carrie Ann have, have no clue what that feels like. They took it out of pure jealousy. These women were all so jealous and they were so scared that like I was actually saying some really good stuff. And then I gave them narcissistic injuries and they decided we just need to take her stuff. Mm, mean girl city and four serious known abusers who have a history of this took down their target and because of the internet they found each other but I dare you to find a comment where I talk like that I won't talk like that in comments even if I hate the person because comments come back to bite you and when you have some when you have a real platform 500k to be exact. I've had well over 500k on that app between all the accounts I've had. When you actually do something significant, you don't throw it away by calling people dumb bitches in comments. <clears throat> when you actually have something to throw, when you actually build something amazing, you don't throw it in the trash by calling people inbred illiterate hags. You don't, you don't make ableist, horrendous comments. You don't knock someone for their disability because it will come back to haunt you. And I couldn't do that kind of stuff anyways. I don't do that. But even when I'm really angry with people, I control myself in the con- comments. I don't make burner accounts. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't have to make fake accounts like these people have about me just making like 
I don't do that stuff. I don't have, I don't think about harming people in that way. I have been, (laughs) I am sassy with my words. I have said things that I shouldn't have said, all of that. I will always admit to that. And TikTok made me a lot more of like a cruel person than I wanted to be. And during this situation, I don't think anyone can blame me for things that I said or, you know what I mean? Like when you have people trying to ruin your reputation and your life with lies, you get a little panicked. And now I know in the future just to not respond to it, but it was so scary. And I, and I apologize for the stupid shit I did. And TikTok made me toxic. And this situation brought out a side of me that I don't like. And, you know, I'll always admit to that, but all these, you'll never find comments though, like those comments and you'll never, um, (laughs) okay. And you will never, oh, I'm going to cry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. You filmed a lot. It's good. Shut up. My battery's about to die and I'm so mad. You will never find comments like that from, okay, you will never find comments like that from me, but you will find clips of lives and things like that. You'll find think videos that they've twisted of my words, and there's a few stupid things that I've definitely said, but um, you'll never find comments like that about me. If you find bad videos about me, especially with Roxy and Emily, ask them to play the entire video. Ask them to play the entire voicemail to Sam, which they shouldn't be playing or have. Like, that's such a breach of everyone's privacy. If they think that they can do that on a podcast about internet privacy, I don't under... Like, that's a private voicemail between my client and I. And ask them to play the whole thing. Because you'll see exactly what I said and they don't want to play the whole thing because it shows you that I didn't do anything wrong. Hello, I'm allowed to be angry at what Samara did. I'm allowed to be angry in those voice notes, but they'll never play the whole thing. They'll never actually show you the entire context of the story. They'll never play the entire lives that they have all these all these little clips from. They won't. What they have on me is edited footage. So enjoy that. I'm not actually a nasty person. I would rather come across harsh and be honest and and t- and be authentic and and say the wrong thing sometimes and apologize and yeah, be a little bit off-putting and blunt, but in my heart I'm a kind person. That's why I kept giving Roxy so many chances and I shouldn't have. It literally <laughs> I should have never let that woman into my life, but I'm a good person at heart. And that's why I can tell this story. That's why I have nothing to hide. That's why I've always been able to go live. And that's why they couldn't get me off of TikTok without committing a crime. That's the funniest part of all this. They think they did something, but they committed a crime. They couldn't get people to not like me. They couldn't prove that I'm the person that they say they, that, that, uh, that I am because I'm not, they are that, they are the monsters. They are the abusers. They are (laughs) the ones who are willing to scam to their, scam their audience and lie. I mean, (laughs) right? They didn't take my platform. They were able to trick TikTok for a little bit and they did it in a super illegal way. And there will be consequences for all of this. And it's just going to take time. But I'm going to move on with my life in the meantime. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. But you can find edited. Yeah. Okay, fine. I'll watch that back. And then, okay. And then I want to talk about Carrie Ann. for your safety like I was so upset I was like crying when I saw that video um and then 
she told me like, okay, Carrie Ann's going to send in one. Um, and then Sam told me she sent in one. And then she said either Rosemary or Rosemary's husband called in one and AMW called in one all after the bathtub video. Yeah. Like knowing now what I know, the fact that like Sam was the one to call a wellness check on you is so fucked up at that point in time. I didn't know what I know now, but I just saw that video and I was like, this is an emergency. Like someone needs to call somebody. Um, and Sam was like, I'm calling now. And then she told me that Carrie Ann and AMW and, and Rosemary all called in a wellness check for you after that bathtub video. Um, but yeah, now that I know what actually happened, it's extremely fucked up that those are the people to call. To, like, they led you to that spot and then they were the ones to call to, like, make sure that you didn't kill yourself. I know I already played a couple of those clips at the beginning of the video, but I just think it's a very important thing to see again, like how far this all went. And I want you guys to see this text from Sam Geisha because she told me specifically that she felt like Samara had no empathy. And that's what that's my experience with Samara is every time she was admitting to like the stalking and stuff she was doing on the Internet. I could tell she had zero empathy and it was terrifying. And that's what Sam Geisha says. I think Sam called because she knew I was worried and she would look bad if she didn't call. I don't think she actually had any feelings about it. And I guarantee you she didn't. She wanted me arrested or dead and she still does. I'm just going to make this an entire series about my comeback and I will make a bunch of videos detailing everything and go through the whole story for you guys. Thank you. Part two coming soon.